just a few months ago, uh, our former Minister of Finance, Dr. Konjo Iwala, who is now the uh, DG of the World Trade uh, Organization, did say Africa, even Nigeria as part of it, has great human resource potential. And she encouraged that the resource course, right, the resource course on items, on, on the free gifts that we have, like the oil and other, you know, uh, natural mineral resources should not trickle into the human resource management in the country. And it also makes me remember during the COVID lockdown, if I can re recall, um, the LCCI, if I'm not mistaken, did mention that the reason for the high employment rates was because of the skills mismatch. So you have people who are seeking a job, but they don't have the skill that can meet up with what is needed in the employment market. And that is a big situation because the unemployment rate in Nigeria is still at a high one. And so we are asking questions on how we can, as much as possible, identify these skill gaps in Nigeria, hopefully get these people, the young people trained, and fix them in places where they can be productively engaged, make some money for themselves, and also for the people around them. Franklin Obadiah, the president of Skills Development Center, joins us to make sense of these conversations. He joins us all the way from our Port Harcourt studio. It's great to have you join us on the program this morning, uh, Mr. Franklin. My pleasure. Fantastic. Good morning, my sister. Good morning. My pleasure so to be your guest this morning. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to need a little bit more energy. We have woken up. There may be no coffee in our system, but we've woken up. And so we just need a little bit more energy from you so we can get the conversation rolling. So as we start, let's just get, of course, I will always ask for an overview on the current state of um, human capital development in Nigeria. Is it satisfactory or is there a lot of work that we need to do? Let's hear from you. The uh, definitely, I know, you know, that we are not where we should be. Uh, in Nigeria today, Nigeria is so blessed, a country. Very, very, very blessed. But the challenge or the question is, are we maximizing our resources in terms of human resources? In your introductory uh, remarks, you made mention of uh, the position of the DG World Trade Organization, our own Okoje uh, Iwala. And what she has identified is the basic truth. We have so much of human resources, but not transformed to human capital. You may have so many people, but are they productive to the level that it will help our aspiration to achieve national development? Or even self reliance and self reliance associate, our unemployment ratio is unacceptable. And the consequences are that unemployment have a correlation, direct correlation with the crime rate, the vices we see in the society, the restiveness of our younger generation, the youth. So as a nation, we have no option than to critically look at the issue of human capital development so that Nigeria will be where we ought to be. Everywhere in the world, uh, they will tell you, go to Americans, go to the Europeans, go to any part of the world, they will tell you that Nigeria is a very, very blessed nation. But that is not enough. Our ability to identify the requisite skills, develop the skills for our own national development, wealth creation, poverty reduction, and possibly crime reduction, it will take us to where we should be. Thank you. 
All right, um, uh, Mr. Badaya, um, this conversation is one that we would have to drag for the next, um, we will be on it for the next 30, 30 minutes. So it's important that we lay it out um, how we can begin to take advantage of what we have available to us, which is our human resource, I mean, the capital uh, human resources is huge, over 200 million. You made mention of uh, uh, the unemployment figures. In as much as I would not want to make reference to the latest release by government, I want to stay with the initial unemployment figure. We put the figures at over 50 50%. Uh, 50%. Um, uh, how do we begin to engage engage the Ni Nigerian unemployed uh, population uh, to begin to unless unless all that um, they would uh, uh, bring to the fore for, for the country? We need to begin to highlight. Let's put put figures to those uh, those uh, figures and begin to you know highlight what Nigerian youth should be doing, what government should do. How can government unless take advantage of this? massive population that we have. That is what I would want you to do for us this morning. Thank you so, so much. The, I think I will start, uh, you mentioned government, because what we need at this stage is systematic human capital development. When we talk about systematic human capital development, there must be identification. Then there must be a conscious effort to close in the gaps. Then you make these people reposition them to be productive uh, i want to uh, i read some articles what uh, professor zuru is doing in uh, borunu state is, is is encouraging it's encouraging i think uh, from the available information in almost all the local governments it's trying to make sure that there are centers that will take care of i think they have learned from there that idle youth or idle hands unproductive uh, uh, young men and women they remain a time bomb to any situation and uh, from the Boko Haram experience they have discovered that these people need to be productively engaged because in life there can't be vacuum the moment the people are not engaged they will engage themselves it's natural so what uh, I would suggest uh, is that government, as a, a human capital development expert, government have a role to play, that I know. Government must look at, yes, infrastructure is good, uh, but the infrastructure without the human capital to drive the infrastructure, the processes, now it will still be marang. So the, the option government have is, to see how, thank God for educational systems, there are universities all over the place. There are vocational institutions too, which also look at the issue of skills development. Skills development, especially where we find ourselves as a nation. You will discover that many people have even first degree, master's degree, doctorate degree, still looking for work. For years, some will tell you that I have a PhD, but the issue is I've been unemployed for 10 years. That calls for, because that, why do we, why do we develop skills? Why do we even train people? We train people to solve societal problems so that they can be paid, wealth can be created in the process, and there'll be self-reliance, which will give birth or room for national development. So government, need to both at the state level at, at the federal level state level even at the local government level government must come back to the drawing board this army of unemployed nigerians they are time bomb how do we go about it and the solution is simple what do we need to deliver because when you talk about skills development it means that you are trying to build the capacities the competencies the the know-how of the target audience so that what is to be delivered is delivered professionally. So in this case, government must come back at all levels, come back to the issue of where are we? Where do we want to be? Vision. A visionary leadership is required. Local government, states, federal. 
where should our people be in the next in the next uh, 10 years a 10 year development plan all right because okay let me hear you just land on your thoughts and, and then i ask the question go ahead okay so the the the, the solution is for us to look at beyond paper qualification mm. what are the missing skill gap in any situation is at the local government level there are a lot of okay let me be, to be very clear in all states of nigeria there are natural resources i'm speaking to you from Harcourt. what is wrong if river state feeds nigeria and africa with fish they, they said yes river state river state it means that there are rivers all over the place this will lead and me nigeria as th this will lead me to nigeria the... as we speak if you can mean... if you can hear me mr franklin this is going to lead me to the next question i want to ask you you mentioned skills okay. gap and you mentioned an industry right now and how much river state should be able to provide in fact the whole of the country with fish can you give us key specific industries that are suffering from this skills gap what the skills are that the people should have that they don't have and what the implications are should that industry continue to experience this gap this skills gap in nigeria my sister the truth of the matter is that all industries in nigeria are experiencing or having skill gaps I mentioned river states. If you go to the north, let's say Nasrawa, Benue, Plateau, even Zamfara, where you have the deposit of the solid minerals, you discover that mining is done in those areas haphazardly, not professional. The reason is because the operators, in most cases, don't have what it takes to deliver to international specifications because before you talk about export you must meet some best international practices so we we in all industries not just not just uh, the agricultural sector the mining sector the uh, 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 all sectors of the economy because we cannot, as we speak now, the the guest before me, talked, uh, the topic was uh, food sufficiency. As we speak, we don't have food sufficiency. And I'm happy she even mentioned the issue of cooperative skills development. In Nigeria today, you'll be surprised. Go and take audit of the cooperative societies. Even in the agricultural sector, all over. And maybe states like Lagos, they are trying to do their very best. In most cases, what we call cooperatives are just a symbol of men and women who are looking for government patronage or government intervention. And it ought not to be so. Because cooperative by design and structure supposed to be a collection of entrepreneurs who know within themselves that at individual level, they will not be able to make the economic fortunes they wish to make and have come together collectively to challenge the status quo through entrepreneurial thinking with the requisite skills to determine their own future socioeconomically. So the issue is that in every sector of our economy, there is a skill gap. And to solve this key gap question, we need to collaboration. Collaboration is key. Private sector, public sector. We have policies for PPP, public-private partnership, but mostly in paper. In terms of practicalizing it or operationalizing it, in most cases, it discover that government is on own, private, is, private sector is on their own. It shouldn't be so. We must come together. Even the industry, the industry itself, uh, the mining sector. Uh, I had the minister of the Solimina Mine Development uh, letting Nigerians know that there is so much potential in this sector. I remember more than 20 years ago 
when solid mineral ministry was created i think that should be about uh, 1995 there about the then minister of blessed memory now is late uh Aladji kalomali kalomali told nigerians that very very soon solid mineral will replace uh, petroleum uh, in terms of revenue generation or foreign investment in nigeria but as we speak 20 25 years after that uh, uh, aspiration have not come to reality. Why? There is a skill gap in that sector. In everything you want to do, it's just a mere wish, except you deliberately define what is required. I, I appreciate what the Nigerian Content Development Board is doing in the petroleum sector with their 10 years uh, uh, strategic uh, roadmap. Uh, they've been able over the past five years or thereabout to see that the requisite skills in the petroleum industry gradually they are being developed. That is what every sector needs to do. Taking a deliberate position with policy in place to make sure that over time, month after month, year after year, that all that is required to deliver in that sector is developed. So, uh, I, I think uh, that is the way to go. Seems like um, a way to go. I, I'm, I'm happy we've, we've been able to identify or establish the fact that uh, virtually every sector of the economy um, is saddled with, um, with a, skill, a skill gap. And um, you can also tell that um, Virtually every state is also, uh, you know, uh, blessed with their own um, competitive advantage in terms of uh, economic um, activities. Yes. Oh, should we narrow the conversation to uh, maybe state governments should begin to identify the skill gaps within sectors where they have comparative advantage? You talked about rivers being able to. Uh, supply the entire Africa with fish or the entire Nigeria with fish because of um, that is the advantage as, as well as oil. I'm sure if you come to the southwest here, there are a few, we have some few advantages as well. And in the north, maybe leaders, leaders should begin to identify uh, the skill gaps within their own state and be deliberate and intentional in uh, locking up those gaps by interventions. Uh, it, it, that is correct. But the issue is that most most highlight here that for that to be realized, we must separate politics from empowerment. Uh, unfortunately, be it at the federal level, be it at the state level or local government level, the political class have tried to score political points by doing some jamboree at times. Most times, they call it economic empowerment. In fact, they even organize people, at times, even so uniform for them in the name of developing their skills. But they know that there is no sincerity of purpose. So that is where the private sector and the public sector must work together. Engage professionals. And say, so these are the challenges we have. In almost every communities, in every local government, in every state of Nigeria, as we speak to those, there are a lot of youths that are idle. And we cannot continue like this. So when we say we want to economically empower the people, it must be systematic. Systematic in the sense that identify, like you have made, talk about the states. Yes, the states actually should drive the process. I mentioned in the opening uh, session, I mentioned uh, what Professor Zulu is doing in Borunu. It's commendable. I don't know him, but I know that from what I can see, I see most of the centers being commissioned in those local governments. And I see the passion is demonstrating. We must remove politics from when we say the people must live where they are to a level of development. Because when we politicize everything, 
you end up having the same result year after year, tenor after tenor. So the solution is, yes, the state can drive the process. Local government, gov federal government can intervene where necessary. Instead of this palliative, 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 what is palliative? Uh, palliative, you say you give somebody uh, uh, 8,000, 20,000, whatever thousand you give the person. You are just making the person to have a taste of what is good and later regret why he's not having it. The issue is to help our people. Let's see how engaged professionals. This is what we want to achieve. In this state, we have this comparative advantage according to the, the word used. In this sector, in this sector, in this sector. We can deliver this product, we can deliver this product. Like where we are, in river states here, you can produce palm oil, you can produce cassava. The fishing I mentioned earlier, there are uh, crude oil is already known. There are a lot of, I mean, only palm oil alone. Palm oil is there. Pan kernel is there, and there are a lot of, even the chefs, there are a lot of industrial uses for them. And here in Transamadi, there are some companies here that are doing a, 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 a lot of a production that relates with those byproducts of the palm oil. Why don't there be a synergy? If you go to those areas of uh, LME, you see fertilizer company on there, fertilizer companies are there. There are a lot of things that, out of these cassavas and the byproducts, there are a lot of things that they could do their own raw materials. So it's for us to sincerely, there must be a sincerity of purpose. If there's no sincerity of purpose, and we are just saying, ah, let it be on record, that I did this when I was governor, I did this when I was local government chairman, I did this, uh, what are the sustainability ratio of what you did? That is why the political class must pause. We can't continue like this and ask themselves some basic questions. I initiated this, I initiated, did it leave at least my tenor? Because most of these things just crash as the tenor crashes or ends. So we we must have sincerity of purpose. Engage experts in the sector. Identify what is to be addressed. So that you can know, I had uh, in my on my way to the studio this morning, I had the uh, President Tinibu's uh, address or a uh, word of caution. It's word of caution to the ministers in the in the retreat they held, and he said the key thing is performance. We we'll have a responsibility to deliver to Nigerians. He was very emphatic that you either deliver or you be shown the way out. So we must define what we want. That is visionary leadership. Define what we want, mobilize resources, set targets, make the people drive the vision. The people working with you, they should drive the process. When they are part of the process, they will deliver at ease. So there must be collaboration, there must be vision of the leadership class. And then there must, we must devoid politics from what affects the people's well-being and future. Indeed. Indeed. Thank you so much. Policies has to be put in place. The government has a lot of work to do. The individuals themselves have to be responsible in their living. And the education sector, too, has a whole huge role to play in ensuring that this skills gap is uh, bridged as much as possible for the growth of the economy in Nigeria. Thank you so much, Mr. Franklin Obadiah, for joining us on the conversation.